Imagine this, it's a hot, sunny day in Dubai, the city of tall skyscrapers and big dreams. People are buzzing with excitement because something huge is about to happen. The world's first Hyperloop prototype is being tested live in front of a massive crowd. Everyone's talking about it. News channels, social media, even your neighbor who doesn't usually care about tech stuff. This isn't just any test. It's supposed to show the future of travel where you can zoom from one city to another in minutes, not hours. But then, out of nowhere, chaos hits. There's a loud noise, a puff of smoke, and the sleek, shiny Hyperloop pod comes to a grinding halt. Did it crash? Was this the world's first Hyperloop accident? Let's dive into what happened that day and figure out the story behind the headlines. The Hyperloop idea isn't new. It started years ago, when a famous inventor dreamed up a way to move people super fast using tubes and pods. Think of it like a train, but instead of tracks, it floats inside a vacuum tube, going so fast it could take you from Dubai to Abu Dhabi in just 12 minutes. That's a trip that usually takes over an hour by car. Dubai, always ready to push the future, jumped on this idea. They teamed up with a company to build a prototype, a small version to test if it really works. The plan was simple, show the world that Hyperloop isn't just sci-fi anymore. It's real, it's here, and it's going to change everything. So they set up this big live demo, invited engineers, reporters, and curious people like you and me to watch history being made. The demo day arrives. The sun is blazing, but no one cares because the excitement is electric. The Hyperloop track, a short, shiny tube sits in the desert, surrounded by cameras and cheering crowds. The pod itself looks like something from a movie, smooth, white, and futuristic. Engineers in headsets are running around, double-checking everything. The announcer's voice booms over the speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the future of transportation. People clap. Phones are out. Everyone's ready to record this moment. The countdown begins. 10, 9, 8, all the way to one. Then, with a whoosh, the pod takes off. For a few seconds, it's magic. It's gliding silently, picking up speed and you can feel the crowd holding its breath. This is it. The future is happening right now. But then, something goes wrong. About 20 seconds in, there's a jolt. The pod wobbles, slows down, and suddenly stops. A weird screeching sound fills the air, and a small cloud of dust kicks up around the tube. The crowd gasps. The announcer goes quiet for a second, then tries to sound calm, saying, uh, it seems we've hit a small glitch, please stand by. But the damage is done. People start whispering. Phones zoom in on the pod, still stuck in the tube. Smoke, or maybe steam, starts leaking out. Was it a crash? Did it break? Social media explodes with posts. Hyperloop just crashed in Dubai, world's first Hyperloop accident. The headlines write themselves, and the internet goes wild. But what really happened? Was it as bad as it looked? Let's step back and think about this. A Hyperloop isn't like a regular car or train. It's a super complicated machine. The pod floats using magnets or air pressure, and it moves in a tube with almost no air inside to reduce friction. That's why it can go so fast, hundreds of miles per hour. But all that tech means there's a lot that can go wrong. Maybe the magnets failed. Maybe the tube wasn't sealed properly. And air snuck in. Or maybe the pod hit something it wasn't supposed to. The people running the demo didn't say much right away. They rushed out a statement saying, the test experienced an unexpected pause. Safety is our priority, and we're investigating. An unexpected pause doesn't sound like a crash, right? But that smoke, that noise, it sure didn't look like a smooth stop either. The crowd wasn't happy. Some people started booing, others just walked away shaking their heads. They came to see the future, not a breakdown. Reporters swarmed the engineers asking, what went wrong? Is Hyperloop safe? Should we be worried? The team looked stressed but kept their cool, promising answers soon. Meanwhile, videos of the crash spread like wildfire online. One clip showed the pod stopping hard with sparks flying. Another had a zoomed-in shot of the tube where you could see a tiny crack. People started guessing. The pod smashed into the wall. The whole thing's a failure. But no one knew for sure yet. Was this a real accident? Or just a hiccup dressed up as a disaster? Dubai's Hyperloop project isn't the only one out there. Other countries and companies are working on their own versions too. 
So, this wasn't just about one test, it was about proving Hyperloop could work anywhere. If it failed here, in front of the world, would that scare off investors? Would people stop believing in the idea? That's why this moment felt so big. The team behind it had spent years and tons of money getting ready. They would bragged about how safe and smooth it would be. One guy even said, Hyperloop will be safer than flying. So, when the pod stopped and the smoke appeared, it wasn't just a machine breaking, it was a dream taking a hit. Hours after the demo, more details trickled out. Someone from the team said the pod didn't crash into anything. Instead, it was an emergency brake kicking in. Apparently, sensors inside the tube picked up a problem, maybe a pressure change or a power glitch, and stopped the pod to keep it safe. No one was hurt, since this was just a test with no passengers. The tube didn't collapse and the pod wasn't smashed. But that didn't stop the rumors. People online kept calling it a crash, pointing to the sparks and smoke as proof. One post said, if this is what happens in a demo, imagine a real trip. Another joked, guess I'll stick to my car, takes longer, but at least it doesn't explode. Let's be real, the word crash makes you think of twisted metal and big booms. This wasn't that. The pod was still in one piece, and the tube wasn't destroyed. But it wasn't a win either. The demo was supposed to show a perfect ride, not a sudden stop. Engineers later admitted they'd hit a snag with the propulsion system, the thing that makes the pod go fast. A part overheated, the brakes kicked in, and that's where the smoke came from. Not a crash, but definitely a mess. They promised to fix it and try again soon. Still, the damage to Hyperloop's image was done. People don't remember boring explanations. They remember the video of a pod stuck in a tube, looking like a broken promise. What does this mean for Hyperloop? Some say it's no big deal. New tech always has bumps. Planes crashed a lot in the early days, but we still fly today. Cars broke down all the time when they were new, and now they're everywhere. Maybe this is just Hyperloop's growing pains. Others aren't so sure. They think if it can't handle a short demo, how's it going to carry real people across cities? Safety's a huge question. If that break hadn't worked, could the pod have slammed into something? And what about cost? Building these tubes is crazy expensive. Billions of dollars for a full system. One glitchy demo doesn't help convince anyone to pay up. Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Vault of Epic Facts channel.